Hello everyone, my name is Pinda. I'm a UX writer at SCB TechX. Besides UX writing, I also work in user research, design strategy, and design process improvement. And today, I'm going to be making a case for why I think UX writer need design system. And I'm going to be sharing with you the copy system we built in Figma. First of all, in UX writing, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, you want to use consistent language. You wouldn't want two different ways of writing OK in the same product. This, of course, might not confuse your user, but it will indeed impact the brand perception. Your customer might be wondering, do you even have a standard at all? Or as a UX writer, you might probably came up with this new copy, only to find out that copy of this scenario already exists with a slight variation. In this case, you wouldn't want a variation. You want to use the same copy to avoid increasing the user cognitive load unnecessarily. But how on earth would you know that it already exists? Or how on earth would you remember that it already exists among hundreds or maybe thousands of pieces of text in one application? So now you can see that UX copy has some unique characteristics, which are the consistency and its reusability, just like UI elements, actually. Now, another example. As a UX writer, you might be wondering if you should write the word approve or confirm here. The use case might be a manager needs to approve a transaction request, but you might have decided that in your application, you're going to use confirm instead of approve here. How can you make sure that your new UX writers know this, or that you yourself won't forget this? So when this kind of question arises, what you could do is check the existing copy in the existing file, but like, oh dear, each file would look like this. There are like 50 screens there, and there will be like five files to look up in. Or you could ask your UX writing peers, but chances are you get the answer like, Oh yeah, I wrote something like that four months ago, but I don't remember exactly what term I used. Let me get back to you. Then that person disappeared for two hours to maybe two days because that person will end up doing the same thing. This process is totally inefficient and unscalable. Wait, what about having content style guides? Will that help? Well, style guides serve a different purpose. They give you guidelines. But what you actually need here is a library of all the copy you have in one product. So one day we say, enough. This is madness. We need a solution. So we came up with a solution, one place to find all existing copy in the product. The first use case is, as a UX writer, I want to quickly find existing copy that's perfect for this button so that I can keep the copy consistent and I won't have to reinvent the wheel. The, the second use case is that once I found that there's no existing copy that's suitable for this button, I can start creating new button copy with peace of mind. Well, let's meet Annie. Annie is a UX writer. Now she's tasked with writing copy for a button, and she's wondering, should I use approve or confirm here? With this new solution, here's what she would do. She can check existing copy by browsing or by searching. And if she wants to search, she can search by keywords in the copy or by metadata. And, uh, and if she finds that the copy already exists, she could just use that copy. But if this is something new, she can know right away without asking around, and she can start writing new copy. Then it depends on your process. This copy might need to go through an approval process. And once approved, she can add this to the copy library. Well, that's the concept. Now, let's see how this works. I start out by taking the button UI from the design library. Now, our button copy in this product is in one place, and it's right here. I can search for button copy that has the word apply, and there exists three pieces of text here. And if I want to write OK, 
Now I'm directed to the correct way of writing OK in this application. As you can see, there's a synonym there. And that's for the search. I can also browse the button copy. We categorize button copy into a yes and a no type. A yes button applies an action that moves the user forward in their journey. A no button does the opposite. For example, a yes button could be accept, allow, apply now, confirm. And a no button could be apply later, cancel, don't allow, or pay later. And if I'm thinking about writing register, now I can see right away that it doesn't exist. So I have to create new copy. I can do so by clicking on the text here and write register. Now it's a good idea to leave a note saying once this new copy is approved, I need to come back to this element to do something with it. Let's say this copy is approved. I'll add it to the copy library. We have a template here, so I can just copy and paste this. Then make it a component. Write register. Change the component name to register as well. And click Publish Change. Now I come back to the production file and click Reset. Override and open the library, and there I'll see the copy register being added. So I just select it. As for pop up messages, again I'll take the pop up UI from the design library. And I click on the word pop up to open the copy library for pop up. If we organize them the same way, you see that this is unscannable because it gets truncated. And even though Figma expands the width of this navigation pane, which might be good, but it's still unscannable because uh, anyway because the text is long. So you need to hover over the copy to see the full text. So for long form copy like this, we decide to leverage this space for the navigation instead. So as a writer, when I need to write a pop-up message, I'll ask myself, what kind of pop-up is this? Is this a confirmation prompt, an error, or a success message? If it's a success message, I select success. And if it's about booking success, I select booking. But if the scenario I'm writing for doesn't exist, I can see right away that I have to create new copy without having to ask around. Now I'm going to show you how the visual and the copy libraries operate independently. You can change the type of this button to secondary, disable it, enable it without it impacting the copy. Or one day if your UI designer wants to change the style of this button to rounded corners, they can do so again without it impacting the copy library. They can also change the color of the button or the typography as well. Now, you saw how it works. Now allow me to take you behind the scene to, to see how we designed this solution. We apply the atomic design concept where we separate the visual and the copy. A typical button may look like this. But the visual and the copy are managed separately. The copy by the UX writer in the copy library and the UI by the UI designer and the, in their design library. Let's zoom in on the copy library. We make each piece of text a component. Now, in the design library, you toggle on the copy library and pull a copy instance from there. So within the design library, you have the copy instance and the visual component. What we do now is we put the copy instance inside the visual component so the copy becomes a nested instance. Now, the UI designer can have different design variations without impacting the copy library. 
and that's the technical side of it. Now, we still have a design challenge here. Um, we have to think about how to design an information retrieval system to support UX writers in their copy alignment process. The system needs to support the browsing and the searching most, taking into account the writer's information-seeking behavior. With browsing, what's important is the organization scheme that will guide the writers to the copy they are looking for. And for the search, we need to think about keywords and metadata. The writer will be able to find the copy as long as the keywords match up, regardless of where the copy is in the organization scheme. As you've seen in the demo, the organization scheme for button is pretty flat or shallow. There are only two layers. You decide first if it's a yes or a no type of button. Then you see the list of all the button copy in that category. And this is how it would appear in the navigation on the right-hand side. And this works for short-form copy. However, for long-form copy, the shallow nesting makes this unscannable in the navigation. So for long-form copy, the organization scheme needs to be a bit more elaborate to support the navigation. And it can look like this. Then we create nesting using slash naming convention, like this. And then we add this to the component name. And there you have it in the navigation pane. First, you design on the category, then on the subcategory if there's any, and then you select the scenario you're writing for. Now let's see how we design the search. Let's look at this example. If you want to find a copy, please confirm your email address. Normally, I should be able to search using keyword contained in this copy or I can search using metadata. Now, metadata is the data, or in this context, keywords that describe this copy. This copy is an error, it appeared in a pop-up, it's about registration, and it's related to email. Unfortunately, we cannot search by keywords contained in the text. Well, not just yet. Hopefully, we can do this in Figma soon. So we have to decide where to put these keywords in the design system so the system can fetch us the copy. We have two options here, to put them in the component name or in the description box. What's special about the component name is that the words you put here will appear in the navigation, and we want to reserve this space for that. So for the search, we put both copy and metadata in the description box. As for the component name, that will be utilized for browsing instead. You can also add synonym in the description box as well. Now, we came across another limitation. Currently, the, the search in the design system doesn't support specific search. So if I type error, registration, and email in the search box, like this, I got irrelevant result. Actually, there's only one piece of copy that contains all of these three keywords. So it would, it would be great if one day we could narrow down our search uh, you know, using multiple keywords in Figma. Well, let's talk a little bit about the file management. One trick here is that due to the search limitation, our workaround is to organize one file for one copy element so we can narrow down our search scope. For example, if I want to find copy that has the word apply in buttons only, I cannot type apply comma button because then I will get a uh, relevant result, probably result from page title or pop-up. But I can specify this by selecting the button library in the drop-down here. By making, well, another benefit of this is that by making your copy component, you can now benefit from something the designer have long enjoyed, which is when you change something once, it gets changed everywhere in the duplicates. This is a master component, and it had instances or duplicates. And if one day you decide to change the way you write OK to OK AY, you can just change it in the master component instead of doing this three times in three different screens. I know some of you have been doing this. So all in all, this is pretty much preliminary. You see there are limitations, and we've come up with many workarounds. This is because the design system weren't originally designed with UX writers in mind. So this is pretty much a prototype of this idea. 
But what's more important is its potential to become full-fledged feature or tool that will empower UX writers. As you can see, the foundation is already there. With a more efficient alignment process, you can shorten your production time. You can free your, your UX writers up for high value work. And most importantly, it will enable your UX writing operation to scale. Using consistent language when you have to can also lead to streamlined user experience and positive brand perception. I want to make a statement here that UX writers too need design system. We need a library where we can browse, search, and organize our copy. And I think it is time that we have this conversation. So if you are UX writers, well, think of your copy as a system. Think reusability. Talk to your UI designer. Advocate. Communicate about the lack of tool. If you are UXers and product people, well, I can emphasize enough that UX copy is crucial to your product success. If you care about what and how your salesperson or your customer support say to your customer, you should be paying attention to what's written on the interface because that's how your product, that's how you speak to your customers. It is then important to empower your UX writers with tools and processes they need to succeed. And if you're Figma for tool makers, plugin makers out there, I want to say that UX writers are underserved their needs unmet, and the opportunities are there. And I think we UX writer will be happy to talk to you. So let's make design system work for UX writers too. Now, I cannot do all this by myself. Luckily, I have a great team. Um, you know, at SCB TechX, we are a technology company that value creative ideas, innovation, and experimentation. This experiment, um, this initiative of ours took place in the span of two weeks. Of course, the idea has been there longer. We tried actually a different approach, but it didn't work, and that's okay. But this time, we kind of made, managed to make it work within certain scope in our project, thanks to these two people. I want to thank my colleagues, our UI designer, Atsachai. His inputs were crucial for this idea to work. And if you want to try something like this in your team, it's important that you, power, that you partner with your UI designer because they're more familiar with this tool than we are. Atsachai also helped me beautify these slides. He owned the visual and interaction design of this presentation. I also want to thank our UX writer, Rinoda, who's been with me in this journey. Rinoda was in charge of prototyping. We discussed and brainstormed a lot, and she drew a lovely illustration she saw in the slide. I, I know they're watching now back home in Thailand. It's 11 o'clock there, so allow me to say something quick. Hey, Bob and Amka, thank you for the time to work together. You are amazing. And this is the end of my presentation. Or one could say this is actually just a beginning. Because if you like some of the ideas that I've shown you, well then as a community, let's have this conversation. And let's see if we can make design system and design tools work for UX writers too. Thank you.